computer. Okay. So welcome to Premiere Plus class number two. Um, tonight's class is appropriate for everybody with um, the basic free program, intro, embroidery, embroidery extra, and ultra. Um, we do have a live studio audience tonight, but they are software owners <laughs> as opposed to visitors. Um, and <coughs> evening miss karen jones um, is going to take lead on class i'm trying to look at the computer and the camera at the same time Not okay well. sounds uh, good so nobody seems to have any questions um i yes. saw joy asked about the download um i will find that and post that once we get going um, the download is for last week's class um, because what we find is if we give you the handouts ahead of time, and I've been teaching software for almost 20 years, if you get, have the handouts ahead of time, you read ahead. Um, and there are too many people in this class for us to not have you paying attention to what we're doing. Now, admittedly, when I go to software training, they give me the handouts, and I am three quarters of the way through whatever the program is, um, you know, a quarter of the way into class. So don't be a bunny. Okay. Stick with us and we're all going to get through this together. Uh, if you were unable to uh, participate in our first class, either version of it, uh, with Zoom, if you have a question, if you are on a computer, if you touch and hold the space bar on your computer, that will unmute you temporarily. Barbie is here and she is moderating chat. Um, but she's also trying to pay attention to learning something as well. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Erin will be taking lead, so she will um, not be moderating chat as much as she did the last class, and I will be moderating chat. Um, to facilitate that, I'm going to mute my microphone as we go. Okay, we will take a break. So somebody probably needs to send an alarm for 45 minutes to an hour from now. Um, so that we make sure that everybody gets up and stretches because I've heard from more than one of you that sitting still for two hours was a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, somebody got the link. That was the link to the video, but there is a separate link for the instruction. So I'll get to that. All right. So off we go. Hi, Miss Tuesday. I see you there. Okay, I'm going to switch my screen to um, the design window of Premiere. And let's see. Is that the right one? No. Oh, come on now. So y'all, this is why we are still um, offering these classes for free because we haven't gotten it 100% down yet. Screen share? Is it not sharing well? Yeah. Oh, well, no, I just forgot the, I brought up the screen. Okay, this is the basic screen of, and I'm going to hide that, um, uh, the intro uh, package. It's not the free one. Um, it if you should have purchased a J35, this came in it. Um, it is pretty bare bones basic, but it has a few more things than free does. Um, but I think you should follow, be able to follow along. Okay, the first thing I would like everyone to do is to let me move this. Can I do this? Um, gosh. I'm going to put that over there. Go to their configure module. Or what I'm going to do, I say, um, not everyone's following along. Um, oops. Sorry, that's thread. Configures the little tool. In classes, we frequently will have everyone reset all their modules just so everybody 
looks the same. No, I grant you. Um. Why? I've lost something. I'm sorry. Hold on. See, we love technology. You closed my program. Excuse me. And I am just so you know, Karen, everybody else knows I am on my slower computer. And um, if it freezes, I may have to switch to a different computer tonight. So um, y'all should be okay to keep going. Yeah, my Windows tends to be really slow. Okay, there we go. So this is what your intro screen will look like. Um, all um, levels will have a file menu on a Windows that looks like this. You won't have the demo mode. Um, the home screen then has various tabs. We went through this last time. That is, um, everything is grayed out, which means you can't use it and you can't use it because there's nothing in the design field. Um, I do want to go here to change a hoop. Um, I don't recall how much we went through the different hoops last time. Um, most machines of most brands are listed. Um, I happen to have an Epic, I have several, but my Epic too. Um, and then these are all the hoops that my machine can use. If you have, say, let's see here, the J35. Um, and I mentioned that the intro came with the J35. These are all the hoops that are available for your use. That's not necessarily the ones that came with the machine. And it contains other brands also. Oh, come on now. You can also tell the machine what hoops you have. So you have your own. You can, uh, natural orientation is the way it goes into the machine. Rotated to sideways. If you're doing any, um, say lettering or a design that's longer than it is, you know, wider than it is tall. Sometimes having putting it in the rotated makes more sense. For design purposes, um, you can make your own hoop size. Oops, come on now. And I guess I don't have windows lock. So you can make some really funny looking hoops. We're just going to stick with, uh, say, a 200 by 200. Okay, and there's my hoops. Um, wizards. Um, you'll see that they're all, um, there are various wizards. These are not, these are all grayed out. 
as they are not available for the intro level. As you go higher up to extra and then to ultra, more of these um, wizards will be available to you. The letter tab. Okay, in, um, if you have the free, you won't have the wizard tab. Uh, the letter tab, you do have some fonts that are built into your software. And you can scroll in. Um, just looking at the children's font categories, you'll see that one is um, active. You have use of that. You do not have use of anything that's grayed out. The same with super designs. Super designs are sort of samples, but they also work like um, fonts in a lot of ways. And there are numerous categories and you have use of some, anything colored. And some food and drink. So some various ones. You also have some various frames you can use. Not all of them, but some. And view and help. We'll, um, here we can change the grid size. I happen to have it at 10 millimeters. Um, you can change it to whatever you want. 25 is sort of an inch. It's not really. So if you're an engineer or mathematician, don't argue. Um, Cause I know it really isn't, but it's close. Um, you can um, oh, let me see. I'm going to say five. Ah, what am I thinking? But in inches, come on now, let's get rid of the millimeter. Yeah, I guess that didn't work. 25. In the configure tab, you can change it to inches, the imperial system, if you wish. I recommend against doing that because then you have really strange fractions. Your hoops and most designs are in millimeters I really um, and it just makes life easier. I know people aren't, a lot of Americans aren't used to using it, but here's a good opportunity to learn the metric system. Okay, so um, to bring a design into your hoop, there are two methods. You can open the design, and we'll do that first. And I like basset hounds, so we're going to open a basset hound. Um, I went to, well, it's in the sample file, embroider, uh, PT embroidery, stitch file to animals. This is the path. This is the basset. It, hovering over it, I have some information about it. Um, and I like bassets. Anyway, so there it goes. On the right panel, it tells me the list of colors it uses. If I hover over it, um, you can see the basset, the black part, his saddle. Um, turn yellow, that says that's the one that's kind of selected. And over on the right-hand panel, it tells me the manufacturer that the digitizer used um, and the color number. You can use whatever color numbers you want. Um, you'll find in the samples that you have available to you, They'll all be in either Sulky or Robison Anton, because that's what the Viking designers use. And see how different ones 
Okay, so we have a nice facet. Um, we can um, flipping. And if he wants to go belly up for a belly rub, these triangles will accomplish that. Um, I can duplicate him. We did go over this, uh, I think last time. <laughs> Just as a refresher. Um, cut places him on, removes him from the design screen, places him on your key, uh, clipboard. Um, paste puts him back. Um, we can select all as we want to, but say you want to, um, you don't want to have to change threads 10 times, nine times. Um, you can combine the designs into one, combine all, one design. You still have all the colors. You can then do a color sort and um, it, it will color sort, combine the different colors. Um, People you, need to mute. Um, you can rotate 45 degrees. Um, modify. If you want to change the size a little bit, um, see proportion is checked. We want to make him 90% smaller. And you'll notice the sizes change. And the ever popular undo button way back up top is your best friend. Um, okay, so over here, we can move in to the center of the hoop. He's over here. We can move him into the hoop. It just moves him just inside. And then we can center him if you wish. Now, if you remember, we use the open command. Now let's say um, I want to give him a little companion. And if I open a design again and say he wants to play with a bunny rabbit and I open, <laughs> save changes. If I open the bunny rabbit, the basset goes away. Um, so I almost always insert the design. Now I have both my characters. It also will prevent you from taking a file that you like, changing it, and then saving it accidentally if you don't wish to do that. Okay, do I have any questions right now? Okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of the basset now. Another thing you, um, uh, a common concern is resizing or scaling a design. Folks frequently um, want the design just a little bit bigger or maybe a little bit smaller to fit in a hoop properly. Say you have a big design and a smaller hoop and you wanna squish it in. Um, you can sort of do that. Um, it can be risky. Some designs resize very well. Others don't at all. 
Um, so it takes a little bit of playing. I do want to, okay, I have the bunny selected. You'll notice it has white corners. Okay, that's the normal. If you look over in my design panel, 4,003 4, is the number of stitches, and it's 43.4 millimeters wide and 64.4 millimeters tall. And I have 400, remember I have 4,003 stitches. If I should just grab a handle and making bigger, I still, I have a significant size, but I still have the same number of stitches. What that's going to do is to stretch the stitches apart. And let me see here. Gonna see all this empty space. You're not gonna want that. So it's way too much. Your um, zoom controls are down here and they're real handy. So we're going to re, um, use my, our, our handy dandy undo button. He's back to what he was. Now that's scaling, resizing. If you hover around over your um, icon, it tells you what that that is my fault i just muted her trying to get rid of all the background sound from everybody else hang on a second did you uh, i think i'm unmuted now you are i apologize okay. it we happens other, we had some other background noise um and i think some of it is coming from your household karen i bet it is hold on Sarah, yeah. can you turn down? Hold on, I'm going to mute myself. How's that? Okay. Um, again, white corners. If I go up to resize, the corners turn blue or purpley. Now I can make him a bit bigger. And remember originally it had 4,000 um, stitches. It now has 10,641. So the design does, or the uh, software does try and fill in with more stitches. Sometimes it can do it successfully and it'll look fine. Other times like this guy, no. And this is what the, the area on top here where my cursor is, this is what it looked originally. And then this is what the um, computer tried to fix. So, um, and this is an indicator just for everybody of quality digitizing versus lesser quality digitizing. Um, right. So when people ask about resizing designs, it is um, very often a, where did your design come from? Um, because if you got a freebie design from some place that has a whole lot of free designs and they have fills kind of like you're seeing on the bunny here, um, Odds are it's it's not the best digitizing. Um, not that anybody digitizing is a bad thing, but sometimes you get what you pay for. Um, and I also really enlarge this much more than would be recommended. Any there's sort of a rule of thumb of twenty percent, and so and this is a whole lot more than that. Um, but yeah, don't don't necessarily accept the same quality on a resized or scaled design. You're, it's just rough. Part of the reason that um, this ear looks the way it is, um, 
the original design was in a satin stitch and the computer sees these really, really long satin stitches. Um, my grid line's nearly an inch. So each design, each ear is, I don't know, I could measure it, but you know, half an inch at least. That's way too long. So the software is going to put in a design to break up those satin stitches. So that's what that looks like. Anyway, that's probably more info than you really cared about. And there, let's do, um, yeah. And there's our little bunny again. Okay, so we have a little bunny. He's kind of cute. Looking at my papers. Um, okay. He has a purple shirt. Let's go over here. And this is his purple shirt. We want to change it. I just double clicked on it. And here's a color selection. And we can give him, I like blue, a blue shirt. It, this is a quick colors. It'll take us to So we can change his shirt. Um, okay, so we have a little bunny and we can we learned how to change the colors. I'm not gonna change anymore, but that's how you go. If you want to change to a um, different type of thread, do metallic. I don't know why. Eh, that's awful. So let's put in some lettering. Let's give him a name. The default is always Georgia. Um, the Georgia font. I hovered over it and it says traditional. That is the category it's in. It, I can use it recommends sizes 20 to 40 millimeters. Let's see what other ones. Why don't we use a kitty font? Um, it's 10 to 50 millimeters recommended. And it's cute. So let's give him a name. I'm going to deselect him. Um, yeah, no, we're not. Happy Easter. Oops. Over here is the size. It always will come in. It's, it's at 10 millimeters now. It'll always come in at the smallest in the size range. So let's leave it at that. Um, gap, spacing, I can change it out a little bit. Um, I can, I have four shapes I can use. For the letters, I could use a horizontal block. I could have the letters go vertically in a circle clockwise or in a circle counterclockwise. Connections, um, it inserts trim commands or I can turn those off. Sometimes with lettering in particular, you might want to turn that off. Color sort. Um, if you want them all the colors, all the same color, you can um, leave it there. 
spacing that's sort of automatic um you can switch it if you wish and remember spacing okay alignment right just left justified centered right justified and we're gonna apply and there we have happy easter now it has green handles that means it's not yet a stitch file um and i can change this one a bit i can make it a little bit bigger Remember, it's not yet stitches. That's what allows me to be able to do that. Um, I, excuse me, I then right clicked my mouse and fix a stitches. White, these are now stitches and you don't want to, um, resize lettering you just don't now okay that's kind of cool and let's give him a name I, oh no no sorry he's got to be jack it's my grandson's name let's do a vertical this time I don't want a color sort because I want each color to be different. And I'm going to click apply. Now, Jack. Yeah. And properties. Excuse me. I do not know why. What did I do? Can I not do individual? Maybe I can't do individual on intro. Bunny, can you help me out on that one? Is it the extra that you can have individual letters, different colors? Anyway. Do I have any questions? All righty. I right clicked and I can delete. Um, when people purchase letters, they're frequently called font. They really aren't. Um, the built-in fonts are resizable. Okay, there's a range. When you purchase designs that are letters, they come in a specific size, maybe a quarter inch, maybe half inch, maybe an inch. Sometimes you get a whole package. Those designs, those letters are used as any other embroidery design like a rose or my basset, um, and they're treated as such. If you have the intro level and you have some um, purchased letters, you have to bring in one at a time. So you'd have to go, I don't ha happen to have any on um, my PC but you would have to bring in an A and a B and a C or whatever letters you're using, using the insert command. Should you have 
um, extra or ultra, there is a feature in the font manager where you can import font. Um, but you need the extra or um, ultra for that. Super designs. Karen. Yeah. The font um, importer is in intro. So it's in is all it? the modules. Yes, it is. Well, it, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was just. What is oh, that today? Okay. Yeah, it's a system font. Oh, edit. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for that. I thought it, I really thought it was extra. That's okay. Um, and somebody else is asking about fonts. So this is a good time to talk about this. Um, if we look at screen um, up at the top, you'll see there's um, a connection control there. And so Karen has the scissors on. So that means when that's selected that the machine is going to get the control um, programming to go ahead and jump stitch between the lettering. Um, so assuming that you have a machine that has jump stitch trim capability, then it'll go ahead and, and jump between the letters. Um, so if I did the connection, the one to the right of it, which is the run stitch, um, and if she selects that one and applies it, you'll see that we get those connection stitches. So you can actually see them right on screen. Um, so that's a partially software-based control and partially machine-based control. Uh, it has to be programmed with a jump stitch trim code. Um, and then the machine has to have jump stitch trim capability and not all machines do. And someone else said um, the back of her lettering looked like it was bird nesting. So the more lettering we have, the more jumps we potentially have, the more those threads are being pulled to the back side. So there's a, a whole lot of variable that comes along with that. Um, so I just wanted you all to be kind of aware that um, this, a lot of the questions that are, are asked on a lot of things that we teach in software are not super linear in nature because there's always a but if or a but when, so this isn't a, you know, an A to Z kind of conversation, um, very much like talking about machines, which I was just doing an hour ago, but sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, thanks. Okay. So you've got, and, and in class, we're, we're really scratching the surface of these controls. Um, now there will be a handout for tonight's class as well. So if you want to go back and go over some of these techniques, um, what we're trying to do is just go ahead and kind of show you the basic controls and where they are and kind of what they do. Okay, but if you have questions, please use the chat. Feel free to unmute yourself if you need to. Um, and I'm gonna put myself back on mute. And where are we on time? We're gonna take a break in about 10 minutes. Uh, okay. Um, let's see here. Let's get rid of this guy. Um, and I right click. These commands are also under here. Um, there are um, keyboard commands. Um, if you say you want to cut it, you can use these. If that's easier for you. I rarely use them myself because I'm more familiar or comfortable using my ma um, mouse. Um, I switch back and forth between a Mac and a PC and keyboard commands are different. So trying to remember which one is which, I just don't care to remember. Okay. I am going to change my hoop size a bit. Um, yep, 
And nobody has that size hoop, but that's okay. And maybe I wanted a bit more, sorry. I want to put a frame on this. <laughs> okay. I mentioned frames and frames are really in a ways similar in handled with um, I selected a frame. Uh, let's see here. Let's do that one. Margin. Um, and I can set it. Size options, size the frame or flourish. Going to apply. I now have a frame right around Jack. Orange handles means I can resize it. and fix the stitches. I'm gonna Before I bring in the, I still had Jack selected. Let's, un, um, I'm gonna click off Jack and redo this. Now, I can make it the size I wish. Green handles means I can resize. And now I can fix the stitches. Okay. Um, you'll notice all on the uh, design panel, only the blue for the frame is uh, selected. So I can, if I want to get to Jack and change it to um, a different color. Um, if you remember, I, um, I unchecked the color sort so now let's change color. Okay. If I had had color sort do this, apply, fix stitches. I only have the one color. Is that perfectly clear as mud? Perfectly clear as mud. All righty. So that's what you can do with frames. And there are some other fun ones you can stretch them out a bit. Oh, I keep doing that. Here we go. If I hold the shift, it resizes out from the center. If I hold control, just make stuff. So you can do lots of fun stuff. Um, the, 
this came up um, last meeting. Um, someone said their view didn't have the grids on it didn't look like mine or it didn't have the hoop in. This is um, currently you have a hoop, the grids. It's 3D view. And if I hold my cursor over, it tells me what's going on. If I use 3D, this would be what it might look like stitched out. T, 2D shows sort of the stitch points. So you can see it's a, um, a satin stitch. And there's no real underlay on this one. Okay, Karen, there was a question about you said orange handles versus blue handles versus green handles. And where yeah. were the orange handles? I'm trying to find my notes. Okay, orange handles um, show that the, yeah, let me get back. Orange handles, it's all grouped. Okay, you can, all right. I could combine them all and it would, uh, Switch then to white. So this is all one group. Okay, so, so orange handles means it can, um, they're all grouped. You can still, um, work in the individual. Let's say I want to do something with this frame by going um, using the previous design or the next design, I can switch between them to the one I want to work on. Okay. Um, I have a question about the combine. Once you yes. combine them, can you uncombine them or should that be our last step? That, yeah, I would make it my last step, but yeah. Okay. Hmm. Let's select all. Let's combine. So one design. And my handy dandy um, undo button, let me uncombine them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now, if I want to resize that, I click resize, blue is resize. The green ones, green handles are your letters. They're not yet stitches, even though it looks like it, or your super design is also green. It means it's not yet a stitch. That's the reason I said that the super designs were very much like the built-in fonts. They're not yet stitches and they can be adjusted quite a bit. And so this is when we would, um, you could potentially save something with the green handles as a VP4 and it's still a malleable file. So even if you have a machine that doesn't read a VP4 format, if you would 
David is a VP for, you can go back in and manipulate these. Once they're fixed, once you export it or, or you do something that actually locks them into place, then you can't you know, play with that, that dough anymore. Um, but a VP4 will allow you to keep this in a somewhat malleable format. So, right. and, and this is a change from previous versions of software and that, that these pieces still stay malleable in multiple tabs. And so when we're switching on the ribbon toolbar at the top from one tab to the other, those green control handles are still staying in place. Yeah, you can barely see it. I hope it shows up. Let's do what um, Bunny suggested. We're going to save as. Save as will only save as a VP4. You can't save as anything else. Okay. I'm going to save that now but I want to use it on my sewing machine or on my embroidery machine. I then need to export it. Um, the preferred file format for almost all Vikings, um, well, all current model and most Retired ones as well is VP3. The J35 only reads VP3, but there are several others you could choose. VP3. Now it does give me the choice to combine, remove overlap, color sort. I can, um, if I'm going to stitch it out, I probably want to do that, but not necessarily. But we're going to do it. Uh, OK. I'm going to click OK. Tell it where I'm going to save it. Um, it's a VP3. If I, uh, I don't have a um, stick in. If I had a, um, hold on. I'm getting a USB stick. All right. So if I want to put it on my stick to put on my machine, I click on my, yeah, this one had the Kimberbell designs in. And I clicked OK. It should now be on my stick. So let's. Uh, let's delete everything. I'm going to insert document P2, my designs, bunny rabbit to VP4. And there it is. Just exactly as it was before I saved as. So I can go back and edit. Maybe Jack is no longer my favorite grandchild and I want to put in a different name. But I like the design and I don't want to start completely over. That's the beauty of the VP4. Okay, and this is a good time to take a break. Okay. Hi, Doug. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Somebody's puppy. So let's take a 10 minute break. Um, and we're going to go ahead and mute. And if anybody has questions, go ahead. I see a couple in the chat. We will address those when we come back. Hi. Ah.
Karen, you might not be muted. Thank you. Recording. So I'm going to start that over again. Before I bring Karen back, I'm going to answer a couple questions. Um, there was a question about maintaining aspect ratio. And if you don't aren't familiar with the phrase aspect ratio, well, how do I keep the height and the width in the same proportion? Um, for me, I'd like to go tall and skinny, but you know that's a whole other conversation. The control button on your keyboard. If you hold the control button down, when you go to drag those corners, that will maintain your aspect ratio. So that one's pretty easy. Um, how do I get the colors to stitch out at once? There's a color sort button on the ribbon toolbar at the top. So if you touch that, once you have all your designs on screen, um, they do have to be combined into a single design for it to color sort. And then um, the last question that I think I'm seeing right now is um, adding borders around lettering. So very much the way Karen just showed the um, borders, you could type 
you know, to your heart's content. Uh, control and enter in your lettering box will actually give you kind of a return to the next line. If you just hit enter, it applies the piece to the screen. Um, okay. And a couple of you asked earlier, and so this is a good time, and I'm hoping Karen will come unmute now, about Mac. Um, are there, did, is it Maddie? Did she do some Mac videos? Maggie does. Maggie, okay, I was like, Maggie, Maddie. Um, okay, so if you can, do you know where her videos are? Uh, YouTube. Okay, so if you would um, say- And then there is a, um, a Facebook group. Uh, she administers, I'm a moderator. Um, That's Mac specific? No, it is not Mac specific. Most people actually have PCs, but we have more Mac people on it than does uh, the other big software group. Yeah, okay. And but Maggie's um, videos. Um, if you can just email me the link. I will send it out sure. um, um, after class. She uses, um, a, uh, a pen name as a middle name, but it's Maggie Murphy. If you put that in the search on YouTube, she should come right up. Yep. And I'll be sure and include that if Karen sends me the link. I'll be sure mm -hmm. to include that um, to the follow-up for this. Um, I cannot. And so then there was a question about, and I, I don't run a Mac at all, um, uh -huh. but combining is, is combine the same icon on a Mac as it is on a PC? Do you know without having to open up your Mac? Oh. Um, the keyboard commands, like I said, I rarely use them. No, on the toolbar is combine oh. and color sort. Are they sure? Yeah, the the toolbars, they're all they're all there. They're arranged differently, but they're still all there. Okay. Um, the Mac capabilities and the PC capabilities um, through extra are exactly the same. Um, they're just a rearranged different, but the capabilities are the same. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and go back on mute. And I'm getting a lot of annotations on my, somebody, um, Okay, I'm getting, I showed Jack Jones. That's my grandkid, by the way. Um, to get rid of him, I could, to get rid of this whole thing, I could either come over here to the, um, the home tab and click delete, or what I do more often than not is right click on my mouse. These are different things I can use. And I click delete. Um, I want to go back to uh, just before the break, we saved a design both in the VP4, the editable format, and a VP3. I showed the VP4, the editable one that had all the boxes. Um, before the break, I want to show. Um, what the VP3 looks like. I'm going to go to insert. If you remember, I saved it on my um, USB stick. So I went to insert. This is the path. I scroll down. It's on my USB stick. Um, there isn't an icon here. If I want to, if I got a bunch of designs, say, 
I can go over to change my view. To tiles or medium icons. Bunny rabbit VP4 or VP3. He's highlighted. I can now open him. And this is what a VP3 file will look like. It's all combined. It has white handles. It's stitched, it's uh, combined, color sorted, um, and ready to stitch. Okay. Now, just a, a side note, not all designs will combine. If there's any overlap right. of color, things may not combine. Um, depending upon which level of software you have, there are some manual overrides for combining. So, right. And you, depending upon what you're doing, you may not want them combined or color shorted. Um, I did on this one as an example, pretty much. To get rid of this now from the screen, I right clicked again on my mouse to click delete. I could go here. There. Um, Bunny asked if I would um, work on the tabs again. I'm going to bring in a design again, go to file, go to insert. It automatically comes up on my USB drive, but that's not where I want to be. Um, I happen to know that um, my PT or my uh, sample files and my program is under documents. So I'm going to click on documents. I'm going to click on P Premiere 2. And these are the various folders I have within Premiere 2. EDO files are ones I didn't create, which is not available on the intro. You need the um, ultra for that. Guides, uh, these are the reference manuals. Uh, my designs, these are my designs. Families, um, if I had, um, uh, for the family tree, which is not available, also an intro. We're going to samples, PT or Premier 2 has a whole bunch of built-in samples. Uh, there are designs for carts, shop, uh, create really, there are some cross stitch. Most of the designs are in Premier 2 Embroidery. I'm going to click on that. Um, there are some pictures, but nothing in my search because I'm looking for embroidery files. So I'm going to go into one of the Stitch or Stitch 2. Um, Let's see what's in here. Stitch two has a whole bunch of um, subcategories. Uh, let's say birds, birds, birds. What do I want to do? Okay, holidays. Click on that and they get a bunch of holidays come up. Uh, I thought. I can scroll down, trying to see something fun. Lovebirds. Um, 
I hover over it with my mouse. Um, you can do it on your trackpad, but again, it shows. Um, okay. Um, on mine, it will say my cell net because I also had that software and I assigned my files to that. Um, most people, it will say item type would be Premier 2, but it shows the width. Huh, come on now. The width, the height, the color stitch, or the stitch count, the number of colors, the size of the file, which is pretty small, the date it was created. If I right click on it, I can select it. I can open it. I can open it with Premiere 2, or I could use Premiere or SoftNet. Let's just open it here. You just select it and it comes on my screen. Um, all the colors again. If I want it selected, which means I can do something with it. Um, I want to move it. I just hover my mouse over it. The um, cursor changes to a uh, double arrow. I left click and I can move it wherever I want. Okay. I like being centered. Um, again, it has the white arrows. It's a finished design. Um, I can copy it. I came over to um, the clipboard um, tab or area. I did click copy. When I hover over it, it tells me a uh, little direction about what that icon does. Notice it puts it down on the clipboard. Now, if you have a Mac, you don't have a clipboard that's visible. You still have one, it just isn't visible. Um, now I can paste it back. See the little down arrow here? I can paste it or I can paste it into the center. Um, I'm left arrowing and, or left clicking to move it. If I paste it now into the center, it'll come in the center. Unclick that. If I just paste, it goes right on top. Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, duplicate. Um, I'm going to go back. I had pasted it. And it's right on top. You can't tell that there are two of them unless you move it visually. Okay. However, if I duplicate it, see how it comes in slightly off the design. It makes it easy to tell that I actually have it. Okay. Um, if I want to remove the design from the design screen, but 
still keep it. I can cut it. It goes to the clipboard. I can then paste it back. If I want to get rid of it entirely, I delete it. And because it's already on the clipboard, okay? Um, this time, instead of using the clipboard area command, I right clicked and I delete. I do have the choice to do those same commands here. So a couple ways of doing the same thing. So Karen, there's a question about um, alignment. Uh -huh. And since you have multiple on screen, uh -huh. could you show them some alignment? I yeah. And this might be a good place to show what happens when you combine them once right. they're aligned and then color sort them. Okay. Um, there is one design selected. That's the only design I can do anything with. Okay. I can move him. Put him back. I cannot move this. Well, I selected them. I wouldn't be able to do anything with the others. So to combine them, I'm going to select all. Orange means they're all selected. If you can see underneath, each one is selected individually. I can go move between them. Okay, but we're going to select all. Now, um, to make sure that they're kind of lined up because one tends, I tend to get a little um, you can then center it in the hoop. Hmm. Now this is I because thought. she's in she's in intro right now, and so uh -huh. this is the only alignment tool that we have in intro. So as we get Extra. further, and yeah, go ahead. As we get further into the modules, and as the the classes continue on, we'll we'll kind of get into each piece um, that exists within the next level of software. Um, so by giving you kind of the basic controls, then when we go to the next class and the next class, we'll build on those bases. So it, this education is really very much like a pyramid. We've got to give you some really good foundation before we get into the heavy duty details. Um, and another Mac owner asked, Card Shop is not part of the Mac system, is that correct? No, it's not. Okay. Um, Ma um, and it isn't in my net either. Um, it's an old program that hasn't changed since I think 5D, 4D or 5D, I can't remember which one, 5D. Um, and to be honest, isn't used all that much. It hasn't changed and it isn't included in the my net. Okay. And someone else asked about the film strip and create. There is not a film strip in um, the Premiere Plus 2 system other than in create. There is, however, in the new SoNet system. So yes. if, this, if the film strip is something that is important to you, we're going to recommend that you talk to your dealer about what it would take to um, switch you over to the SoNet system but I don't want to talk about that too much tonight. So now we have everything combined, but you see all the okay. colors. And Look at all these colors. Yeah, 40 colors. I do not want to change a thread 40 times. So have them all selected. 
it's the way I want it. I'm going to combine, I can combine all, which combines all, it hasn't color sorted. We're still all there. Um, it has a white handle, so it's all finished. I am going to go back and uncombine it. And now I'm going to combine selected, which I still have. There, there's, um, not always a lot of difference, to be honest. Okay, so I don't want to change so many times. Um, I can color sort now. If for some reason, okay, I want to change a couple things. I change this first red or first frame. I selected it. You can see it's this, um, the yellow part is the one that's selected. Let's change it to yellow for some, okay. So it's a bit different. Okay, got that. So I want to color sort. And what this does is narrows it down to the least number of color changes it can do. Depending on the designs, you may still have to change. Um, it won't combine all the same colors. It won't. It won't combine all the colors into one, depending on the design. Um, it has, uh, Bunny mentioned last time, if you have a black dog with um, white eyes and a black pupil, it's not going to, um, you're still going to have to change the thread. So it won't combine those or your design will look weird. If their design is layered on top of each other, uh, different color threads to give layering and depth, it may not combine those and you wouldn't want it to. Um, if you have a purchase design, I recommend you not color sort and combine, uh, especially in the in the hoop type um, purchased where you can change things up. So there we go. Um, under the notes and settings, can you see here? This tells me about the design. And if I want to add my own little notes, I can do that. Okay. Um, if I want to rotate 45 degrees, I'm not sure if I would, but maybe could be kind of interesting in some projects. Um, we discussed the alignment. I just move that out of the hoop. I want to move it into the hoop. You notice it, it brings it into the hoop, but it doesn't center it. If it's important that it be centered, Click alignment, center in the hoop. This little um, circle with a cross hatch. Initially, it's the center of the design, but it's also the center of rotation. 
Okay, let's get that in the center. Well, um, the square corners can be used to resize. We've mentioned that. The triangles, flip it up and down or sideways. What we didn't talk about is the circle. This can rotate the design in infinitely. So you're not can buy, um, constrained by just rotating at 45% or 45 degrees. So it's rotating right now around the center axis. Okay. Now we can move this center rotation to wherever we want it. So over here now, so it's not the center of design anymore. And notice the design rotates around um, the center. You can even move that off. Let's move it over here. Off the hoop and rotate. So even though it's um, the intro level program, you still have some design capabilities. And there you go. And the undo button goes all the way. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So intro is primarily this home, home tab. No wizards, correct? There are no wizards. A little bit of lettering. A few letters. Uh, I'm trying to remember how many. I'm thinking five. No, more than that. Okay, so you see, if you have intro, you see all of the letters that are available in the higher level programs, but everything that's grayed out is unavailable to you. Um, when, so go ahead, sorry. With the Premier system, the higher up you go within the system, the more of these fonts are available to you. So that's just something that's um, different than some previous versions of software. If you've upgraded from previous versions of software, so if we had somebody who had 5D extra and they upgraded to six in Premiere Plus and Premiere Plus two, they carried all their fonts over. But if you came into Premiere, I don't know if the change was with plus or plus two, um, but if you came into that, you get this graduated font system. Mm -hmm. Um, and that same applies for super designs and frames. Super designs and frames too. But the view tab is very much the same for everybody. View tab is identical. And then if you need help, we have this lovely help tab. Um, about Premiere 2, I'm going backwards here. Um, I clicked on it. This shows me that I have Premiere 2 Embroidery intro version. This is 12.5.0.704 uh, is the version number. It started out, what was it, three years ago as 12.1. And so these are all the updates that it has done. And it tells me where it's from. Click OK. That's the only information under about. If, OK. Um, help, Learning Center, and Internet FAQs um, do take you to the 
um, the internet help, list of help topics. Um, do you see my screen or do I have to reshare it? I can see just the base, but if your help topics is a pop up, you'll have to reshare that one. Okay, uh, remember I clicked on the uh, help tab. Um, some topics. Uh, let's see here. File tab, new, new window open. And this tells you what each of those menu items are. You can also search by clicking search and let's just put in um, letters. And it takes me to a variety of um, topics. Okay. So and we have a question That's what helped. Yes. Um, about designs and the difference with purchase designs um, and what happens when you start opening them into software. And I believe I touched on this in the last class, um, but I'm just, I'm just going <coughs> to mention it again, excuse me, um, with embroidery files software is is a manipulation of an embroidery file so even if you open the file in software um, you run the very real risk of modification so depending um, upon what you're doing in a lot of cases you're better off just copying and pasting a file straight to a usb or sending it over to sonet assuming that you don't want to make any changes in it the moment that you make changes in a file, um, then of course you need you need your software. You want to make color changes. You want to do something else. So, Karen, if you'll open a design. Yeah. Um, is it okay if I open? I, I think a good example is the Kimberbell. Is it all right if I open one of those? Sure. I mean, anybody can find a Kimberbell dealer. Um, we know or, one. Well. <laughs> Okay, what I, I went back to my USB stick because that's where Kimberbell is. I'm going to open that. It all says P doesn't mean anything. I'm going to go over to view. Um, just go me. Well, let me see. Large. I'm going to pick. This looks like you went to this a Kimberbell one? event somewhere, Karen. I can't imagine where it was. Okay, so I have my design. Um, you'll have P2 on yours. I just happen to have this software. So I'm going to open that. Okay. Um, first off, I would, I personally would, it, never resize an applique design that's been purchased. Yeah, you can, it won't work well most of the time. Um, and this is an applique, anybody who's done a Kimberbell. Um, I hover over it, we'll comb um, it. It's digitized, I believe, in, um, well, that's the software it was digitized in. So, two cyan is a number or color number. It then is orange, back to um, cyan two, back to orange. So you have a lot of repeats. Okay, 11 changes. Um, Do I have design player? No, not here. Except on this one, you're dealing with the, the applique placement and the tag. Exactly. So the first. It's weird. It's. Um, trying to 
trying to? No, you don't have player in intro. Okay, that <laughs> can't find it. I would never, okay, this is a purchase design that I brought into my software. We know it's an applique because we happen to know it's an applique because that's what I purchased. It does a, uh, an outline stitch, you'll stop, you'll change your color, or you'll put down your fabric, it'll do a tack down stitch, and then maybe the final stitch could be a tack down for another whatever. Um, if I were to color sort that and it's available, look what's going to happen. It went from 11 um, color changes. And remember, these are just color changes. It's not what the designer thinks the final one ought to be. So there are 11 color changes. If I was to color sort, it brings me down to eight and it's going to screw up the design. That's why you don't want to do it. Now, um, if I bring in a purchase design, like I said, I almost never color sort and absolutely never on an applique. But now I want to put it on my stick. We're pretending it was on the computer. So I'm going to export it. And here is that it's not going to combine it because there's nothing to combine or remove overlap because there's nothing to overlap, but it still has that option. If I forget to ch change that, and I'm, I'm going to forget to do it on purpose, I'm going to click OK. Um, it comes up as Bunny Rabbit exported um, VP3. I'm going to export. Uh, Let's change this to something else. Bunny rabbit. Okay, test bunny. I don't need to worry about putting in the file format on export. Okay. Remember, I for 11 colors now. I'm going back to file. I'm going to open a new window. Save changes. Nah. I'm going to insert. The test bunny that I accidentally color sorted. Look, it did it. Don't want that. So let's get rid of him. And I bring in Bunny Rabbit. Oops. I overrode a name. Insert, I'm going back to my Kimber Bell. I'm gonna open Kimber Bell, the child mixer. Just what I had, 11 colors. Now, if I want to export it, to put it on my stick, I'm gonna turn this off. I unchecked color sort. I would also at this point suggest considering unchecking optimized stitch length. Optimized stitch length means the software goes in and looks at 
you know, stitches. Real tiny it, little stitches. Yeah, it, it may eliminate stitches, but depending upon what you're doing, you may need them there, particularly for things like freestanding lace. Um, oh yeah. We may, so just be aware that that control, it may not look like it does anything, um, but it does um, make changes and it definitely will change your stitch count. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know that it really made changes to your design until you stitch it out and it doesn't stitch properly. Or it doesn't Especially stitch in freestanding lace, yeah. So I unchecked all of those because this time I remembered because I've made this mistake before, we all have. I have no idea what you're talking about. Sure you do. <laughs> BB? On my drive, export. I'm gonna click him off. I right clicked to delete. Now I'm going to insert to get back and BB, double click. I've got all in order as it should be because I unchecked color sort. Um, the safest thing is to, um, yeah, hope that didn't screw things up. Um, is to do the copy and paste like Bunny suggested. Um, I like to open everything, but uh, just remember to color sort or not to color sort a purchase design. Any questions about that one? It, it's, um, if anybody has done those um, OESD has some beautiful tile scenes uh, that require 20, 30 color changes per tile. Um, embroidery library and urban designs in particular have some really um, shaded designs where colors are on top of other colors. If you color sort those even accidentally, you'll end up with less steps and it's gonna be a mess. So just as a rule of thumb, do not color sort and combine um, purchase designs. Okay, and I'm gonna, I may mess up the view here for a second, but- That's okay. Let's see. And talking about, if you guys haven't ever seen, um, whoops, hope I don't make you dizzy. If you haven't ever seen some of the tile scenes, um, there's one on the left from OESD, and I'm sorry, from Anita Good Design, and one on the right from OESD. And so if I, how do I do this with you? I remove your spotlight. I'm going to stop, share. There we go. So, um, these tile scenes are stitched. I'm holding the camera, which is why it's shaky. Let's see, I'm gonna put it down, less shaky. Um, these tile scenes are, are done in, in blocks. Now, somebody asked, and I know that, that Karen's shop stopped. It's been a long day. Karen stopped sharing her screen. That's a lot of S's. Um, <laughs> that, that design, if it looked odd because you were seeing the, that yellow or orange and it wasn't showing up in the design. That's an applique. Um, so that's a, the placement and tack down stitches are covered. The, those blues and yellows were covered by the final decorative satin stitch. So it does look a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So my computer would not let me into software at all tonight, which is why Karen was on the lead. And I appreciate, I don't think she was expecting that. Um, but what do I want to do? There we go. Okay, there we go. Back to her design. Um, so the blue and yellow are placement and tack down stitches. Mm -hmm. there. So even if she changed them to, you know, fluorescent green, or you won't see them because they're still underneath the satin stitches. And that's I could not. 
Oh, couldn't find the color. Yeah. So just to show that you're not going to see that, I'm changing it to purple. And it's purple on my design or my design panel, but you can't see it here. Um, a real wonderful feature in Extra and um, Ultra is something called a design player. And it will show you what it looks like stitching out. I don't know how it'll show you the whole path it's taken. So you will see those, but. Uh, so yeah. can you copy that and just put it over to design player and, and close out an intro? I can open it up. Yeah. And do, okay, here's ultra. Um, here's the bird. Design. Okay, like nope, you. No, no. You gotta share it. <laughs> Oops. Okay. This is the bird from earlier. Design player. Um, bring it all the way back. Play the play button, press the play button, and it shows me how things stitch out. And it's going really slow. So I'm going to fast forward it a bit. And you can see it's doing a running stitch. And it's hard to tell, but it's going backwards also. There's a stop. Um, I'm going to stop this. Um, wants me to lay down fabric. Still now, not time. all appliques have stops in them. No, no. Um, it has to be digitized. Your Kimber Bell's not going to show. That's why they use separate color stops. But now we can tell it's doing a satin stitch around. I'm going to go a little further, faster, because I'm bored. Now it's going to do the green. And you can stitch, see how it stitches out for that Kimber Bell. I right click to delete. Let's put in the Kimber Bell again. Um, okay. So this is how this is going to stitch out. Yeah, it's that first color. We're going to go a little faster. And I can tell that it's stitching down for um, the mixer, which is really one reason I like to open it up. OK. It didn't stop on the design player, but your machine is going to stop because it wants you to change thread. You're going to follow along in the directions of your um, design. That's also the tack down for the applique for the mixer. This is the tack down, yes. But that's kind of the beauty of the design player. So that was the tack down. This is, I believe, a satin stitch. Yeah, see the underlay is the zigzag. We're going to get way too much into like design detail here. Yeah, but that's it. <coughs> so okay. what we have covered with a little extra is all of the basic controls in intro. Um, and Karen, very much like me, 
goes in um, where her brain leads her. <laughs> it's kind of fun to listen to it from the opposite side. Um, so if you have questions about anything that we've done, um, if you want to follow through the official tutorials, um, we will be emailing everybody the link for them tomorrow. And um, we will be emailing the YouTube link for this as well. Uh, the nice thing about not having an instructor who necessarily follows the <laughs> tutorials in a straight line is that we all learn differently. And this is a great way to learn a little bit differently. So if you've sat in and listened to everything that we're doing tonight, you wanna to sit down and, and actually do it and go through everything. Um, most of what Karen has shown you is available um, in your software. Obviously this mixer is not, and the heart was though, correct? <coughs> yeah, the heart was a sample. Everything I showed with the exception of the mixer is in the sample files. Okay. Or uh, super designer letters, but the the Bassett uh, little um, heart, they're all in the sample files. And there are what, something around 700 samples? Whole bunch? Whole bunch, I'll go with whole, whole bunch. bunch. I'm thinking it's 700, but don't quote me, but it's a whole bunch. Okay, and so our next class is in two weeks. Um, assuming that um, I don't do something cuckoo with the recording again. I don't know what happened last time. <laughs> um, but what I can tell you is that we will not be here next Thursday, even if the recording goes sideways. Um, as Barbie sighs from across the room. <laughs> all right, we're not even gonna talk about that. So on that note, thank you all for being with us. Um, as some of you probably noticed, we did have um, a number of people not show. So we have started um, pushing past the maximum for Zoom. And in two weeks, our intent is to cover, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, more advanced features for the embroidery intro, embroidery, embroidery extra, um, and ultra. So if you have just the free software, everything that we're going to cover um, from, you know, after today will be um, on the paid software systems. That doesn't mean that you're not welcome to sit in and get an idea on what more advanced uh, software has. And Karen is going to email me the link for the Mac videos so I can make sure everybody has those. Okay. So um, thank you guys so much for being here again, and we look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye.